Karachi is Pakistan's mega city, the country's financial hub and home to almost 20 million people. But where there's money, there's crime, and where there's crime, there's kidnapping. Whether fueled by organized gangs or militants in search of funds, Karachi is suffering a kidnapping epidemic. Now, with police struggling to cope, civilians are fighting back. Karachi, Pakistan. A 30,000 strong police force is unable to maintain law and order. Warring gangs have left 1,500 people dead this year. Hundreds have been kidnapped and abducted. Where policing has failed, civilians step in. I just received another message. Uh, there's another kidnapping. Uh, I received a telephone and now they have sent me the details. Ahmed Chinoy's mission is to get kidnapped victims back alive. Three or four people intercepted him on bikes and took him away. That is the only detail we have. Then there was a call also in which they said they know not to inform anyone. And then that's it. The kidnapped victim is a shopkeeper called Abdul Munim. Ahmed wants to meet the family quickly while events are still fresh in their minds. They meet at a safe house in case the family home is being watched. If the kidnappers sense that outsiders are involved, they may kill their captive. Ahmed Chinoy is not a policeman, but a volunteer. He runs the Citizens Police Liaison Committee, the CPLC. It's a civilian organization set up to support victims' families. Funded by philanthropists, all the help it gives is free. Seventy people work at the CPLC. They give guidance on ransom negotiations, trace hideouts, and even orchestrate police arrests. Ahmed and his team handle at least eight kidnappings a month. Only last night, a well-known industrialist named Riaz Chinoy, no relation, was abducted. Very high-profile figures are at great risk. If the villains can breach their security, they can demand huge ransoms. This was Tawfiq Chinoy, Riyaz Chinoy's father, who got kidnapped yesterday evening. So, naturally, I have to call them up and give them the confidence that we are in this case. Six kidnappers mounted a well-coordinated ambush. They fired at the vehicle, and four of them quickly overpowered the armed guard and chauffeur. And he 
was just half or, or at least one kilometer away from his factory when one of the motorbike intercepted uh, his car. Uh, the car got stopped and then a car came from behind. Uh, four people came out, dragged the Saab out of that car and took him away. Ahmed's meeting the family this evening to coach them on how to handle negotiations. If uh, they get shattered, they will pay any amount to the kidnappers. This will encourage more and more kidnapping for ransom cases because this will be easy and big money for the gangs. So we want to discourage this trend. And uh, when the families are in control, when they negotiate properly at a meager amount, this I think is a big success. Ahmed will ask if it's okay to film the meeting. He's never granted access to the media before, and he's not sure how the family will react. If the information shared in these initial meetings falls into the wrong hands, Riaz will be at even greater risk. <laughs> Sorry, I tried my level best, but they were not prepared to uh, have an interview or to uh, get this uh, documented. And uh, they were, they had had have their apprehensions. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in a state of shock, and they don't want anyone to know about this more and more. But Ahmed has agreed we can follow his side of the story. I will be coming to their house late in the night again. Because uh, uh, also I, I need to make his sister prepared to start negotiation, you know. Mm -hmm. So she said, Riaz's life may depend on skillful negotiations, and the family have asked if Ahmed can appoint a professional negotiator. He's advised against that. But I said that whatever the feelings you can deliver, whatever the uh, dialogues you can deliver for your brother or your, for your son or for your uh, brother, no one else can do it. So it should be you or from the immediate family who would be able to negotiate. Abdul Manim, the kidnapped grocer, has spent his first night in captivity. His son, Asif, supported by family friends, has come to register the case at Ahmed's organization. They've had another call from the kidnappers. Once again, Asif heard briefly from his dad. The sound was not so good today. Yesterday was good. <coughs> Today they might have tortured him. It looks like like yesterday we spoken to him. They, he was very relaxed. And today uh, in the afternoon, I guess in the morning, when he spoken to him, he was really depressed actually. We don't know the reason obviously, but it sounds really depressed. While Asif fills in his case file, his friend explains why Karachiites trust the CPLC more than the police. I got a call at mm, uh, 9 in the morning, in the same morning from my friend that there is an emergency and my father has been kidnapped. The first simple question he asked, should I call 15, which is an emergency uh, reporting number for the police? And I was like unable to answer him this simple question. Common people do believe due to their performance, due to their reaction, a police is uh, at many times involved 
or NBA have activities. collaboration with these uh, this type of activities. So I took at least five to ten minutes in answering him whether he should call one five or not. This distrust of the police is what makes Ahmed's work so vital. He takes a patient approach, coaxing his witnesses to tell him everything they know. So far, the family have followed Ahmed's advice to the letter. They are uh, talking with the kidnappers. The kidnappers have uh, demanded a hefty amount of uh, uh, 50 million rupees. And uh, they said that they don't have that type of money. And uh, they are just, uh, uh, they have just offered them that we can, what maximum we can pay is 0.1 million. So that is just to start the negotiation so that we can gather some information technically about the whereabouts of the kidnappers and about the, uh, their intentions and so on. So hopefully within a few days we will be able to uh, get some good news regarding this case. CPLC intelligence has already helped bust 13 gangs this year. They use a vast network of informers and sophisticated phone tracing equipment. Across town at the Karachi Stock Exchange, Ahmed Chinoy is at his day job. He earns his living as a successful textiles trader. His CPLC work is purely voluntary. We have our own businesses, we, need, we have to go to our own offices also, uh, spend an hour or two with the office, maybe more, maybe less, and then uh, work for the cause of CPLC. In practice, Ahmed is on call for the CPLC 24 hours a day. Today, he's barely started work before he's summoned to police HQ. Well, we are going to the, the CCPO's office. He's the additional IG of uh, Karachi. And uh, we'll be discussing a kidnapping case with him. It's a joint meeting between the investigation teams and uh, the CCPO and myself. And uh, we will, inshallah, come out with a joint solution. Though the CPLC is quite distinct from the police, Ahmed works closely with Karachi's anti-violent crime cell, a crack police unit set up to tackle Pakistan's most dangerous criminals. Some prominent citizens have been abducted this year, including the director of the State Bank of Pakistan and the nephew of the Chief Justice, as well as the industrialist Riaz Chanoy, kidnapped just two days ago. Recent spirit of the happens has uh, definitely worried us, uh, especially the recent uh, kidnapping of Mr. Chimai. We are uh, facing the wrath of one group which is uh, based in Quetta and the other group uh, which uh, I believe has uh, some very close lines with the TTP. The TTP is the Pakistani Taliban. For years, they've had a presence in Karachi, but kept a low profile here while launching violent attacks in the northwest of the country. The recent trend towards high yield kidnapping looks like fundraising for terrorist activities. As the Karachi police have moved against the Taliban, arresting some of their commanders, bloody battles have cost the lives of many policemen. As head of the CPLC, Ahmed Chinoy is directly in the firing line. He has to take precautions. I normally have these uh, two uh, armed policemen with me and uh, then uh, also have a mobile that follows me because of the security threats uh, that are uh, in the city, particularly with the kidnapping gangs and also other terrorist gangs. And CPLC is a household name for every criminal in Karachi now. Back at the CPLC, there's been another development on the case of the industrialist, Riaz Chanoy. They have a recording of the kidnappers threatening his sister. Ahmed has brought in a police inspector. Uh, 
Ahmed sets out immediately to consult with the family. He's traced the call to South Waziristan, a tribal area that's beyond government control. The kidnappers will be hard to locate and almost certainly Taliban. The way they pick up this guy and the way they drove him away and the way the call has come, I'm uh, pretty sure that uh, this uh, is an act by the militant groups and they have linkages to Taliban and other militant groups. So that is a way of uh, generating funds for their activities. The ransom was uh, 50 crores. That is 500 million rupees. 500 million rupees, close to $6 million. That is the biggest ransom ever asked uh, by any group. To any for, from any victim's family. Riaz's kidnap has become a matter of national security. The authorities want to mount a rescue bid but they don't know exactly where he's being held. CPLC. The techniques devised for such high-profile cases are also used by the CPLC in their search for the grocer, Abdul Manim, and his kidnappers. They are calling me every day, asking for the ransom amount, what would I pay? And what they have asked me uh, has been reduced to 50%. But as each day passes, the elderly captive is sounding more distressed. Hello? Hello, Daddy? Hello, Daddy? Hello, Daddy? Hello, Daddy? Hello, Daddy? Hello, the CPLC have traced the call. They think they can tell the police where he's being held. The police are keen to raid the gang's hideout and release Abdul Manim. While Ahmed briefs the police chief with the new intelligence, Asif and his family must face the reality of what might happen if the raid goes wrong. There'll be no raid without Asif's consent. The final decision rests with him. It's a risk, but the anti-violent crime cell has busted 22 gangs this year. It all boils down to one question. Does he trust the police? The decision he makes is not the one Ahmed was hoping for, but he puts a brave face on it. Take, take. Okay, there is uh, some good news that uh, Abdul Muneev was kidnapped uh, uh, about a week back, uh, has returned back last night. Uh, their families uh, have negotiated with them. After seven nights in captivity, Abdul Muneev is free. His son Asif has brought him into the CPLC. It was around 10 o'clock in the night. We made up the deal. I saw my father back. I sent one of my employees to give them the money. My employee had money in his hand, in, wrapped in shoppers. 
person came said my father's name he gave the money to that person he took the money and within an hour so my father was at home so as soon as we will debrief uh, the victim uh, today we will go on for uh, for arresting those criminals any details they can get from abdul manim may help the cplc to nail the gang hum janna chahte hain ki aapko jab unhone kidnap kiya kis tarah kiya kahan leke gaye uske bare mein hame zara aap detail batayenge takriban aadhe ghante ki woh drive ke baad unhone mujhe ले जाकर किसी कमरे में धक्का दिया तो आधा घंटा लगा अच्छा इस दौरान उनको कोई फ़ोन कॉल आई उन्होंने किसी से बात की या फ़ोन करके बोला काम हो गया है या किसी और का फ़ोन आया नहीं कि जल्दी आ जाओ कुछ नहीं इसका मतलब उनका गैंग लीडर भी उन्हीं के साथ था ठीक है अच्छा उसके बाद उसके बाद कमरे में धकेल दिया बंदा एक आता था मुँह पर कपड़ा बंधा होता था उसके हाँ उसके बाद वो आँखों में मेरे पट्टी बांधता था तो दूसरा आता था अच्छा 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 उसके बाद इनसे जो भी उनकी बातचीत होती है वो हमारे इल्म में है या हमेशा तराबते रहते ठीक है अब आप मुझे बताएं कि अब उन्होंने कोई आपसे जिक्र किया कि तुम्हारे बेटे पैसे नहीं दे रहे या बड़े मतलब हाँ उन्होंने कहा कि मतलब तुम्हारे बेटे जो है ना निकालने को तैयार नहीं बनाने तुमसे कोई दुश्मनी है मोहब्बत नहीं करते मोहब्बत नहीं करते किसी कच्चे इलाके में हुई डी ब्रीफ गोज ऑन फॉर ओवर पाँव बहुत ज़्यादा होती है गाड़ी राज ब्रेक अच्छा फिर उसके बाद आपको जब वहाँ से उन्होंने रिलीज करने के लिए किया तो मुझे पट्टी बन के ले आए फिर रिक्शा में बिठाया जो मेन बंदा अक्सर मेरे से बात करने आता था वो साथ बैठा पीछे पंद्रह बीस मिनट की खड़ाई के बाद रिक्शा रुका उन्होंने कहा कि देखो बाहर उतर रहे हो आप चश्मा निकाल रहे पलट के नहीं देखना द फैमिली फॉलोड अमेज एडवाइस द मोमेंट ऑफ डिसीजन देन एक्टिंग अलोन दे पेड अप What option do you have? Just give me an option. I would go for that. You don't trust your police. You don't trust your politicians. If these kidnappers come to our office tomorrow and ask for money, what will we do? We will pay them. जिंदगी में ऐसा मौका दोबारा ना हो कि मैं ये सब चीज देख सोच भी नहीं सकता उस परेशानी को याद करने के बजाय आगे जो उसने मुझे सुकून दिया है उसका शुक्र अदा कर आसिफ हैज बॉट हिज फादर्स फ्रीडम ही वोंट से हाउ मच ही पेड बट ईच टाइम समवन पेस अप द गैंग्स विल बी एम्बोल्डेंड एंड स्टिल मोर फैमिलीज विल बी रिप्ड अपार्ट I am thinking of leaving Pakistan. But for, for real? Yeah, for real. Where where would you go? I don't know. I am planning. Crippled by an endless succession of kidnappings, Karachi itself is being held to ransom. The authorities can't afford to lose this battle. criminal elements always try to sabotage activities in Karachi but Karachi is such a mega city it's 70% of the lifeline of Pakistan so if this lifeline is disturbed to any extent then the lifeline of Pakistan would be disturbed if Karachi would prosper the whole country would prosper after we had finished filming Abdul Manim's kidnappers were arrested in a CPLC raid following 2 months in captivity Riaz Chinoy was rescued on the 6th of December. Three known militants were killed in the operation. No ransom was paid.